Why We Build. That's the title of this segment. Three words, three syllables that communicate so much. Why speaks to the motivation. Ideally, it will involve mindfulness, intent. We speaks to us, our community, our collaborative efforts. Build speaks to the action. It connotes constructing. It is positive. Through this segment, we aim to make clear our rationale and showcase our subsequent steps. Opposite of that mindful action may be what's shown in the 1997 sci-fi movie Cube, in which a handful of individuals awaken to find themselves in interconnected, booby-trapped, cube-shaped rooms. It's hinted at that the cube was a military-industrial project gone awry, that no one had the complete picture, that each contributor never bothered to ask why, and the result was a Kafkaesque killing machine. A far-fetched example, certainly, but one that underscores the importance in contemplating the why before acting. Pausing to inquire why can stimulate each person to think for themselves, to weigh the merits of an idea they have, or of a suggestion or order given to them. By checking that idea, suggestion, or order against their own conscience, they are more likely to act efficiently, purposefully, and in harmony with themselves and others around them. In a past Why We Build episode, we discussed the harassment Alexei Pertsev was facing. He was not accused of harming a person or property, but of simply writing code. Pertsev saw a demand to bring privacy to a crypto protocol where it was absent. His why was clear. He acted and built a service that other individuals voluntarily used. So why was he harassed? He was harassed because he empowered everyday individuals, something that threatens the status quo, the very people who in turn harassed him. Does that mean such efforts should not be undertaken because of fear, because of the what-ifs? No. If those of us who champion personal responsibility or self-sovereignty or self-governance were to self-censor, we'd individually be worse off because we're not being true to ourselves, and we'd be worse off as a human organism. But we can each learn from others to minimize risks, and we can, and I'd argue should, acknowledge those who have advanced this quest for human liberation. In early October 2013, a handsome man in his late 20s entered a small library branch in San Francisco. He found a table, sat down, and opened his Samsung 700Z laptop to tackle some online work. But he soon heard a commotion. A man and woman were arguing nearby. He looked up. At that moment, a stranger swiped his computer away while others pointed firearms at him. That man, Ross Ulbricht, has been caged ever since. Ulbricht was well-read in philosophy, Austrian economics, and agorism. He had a drive to abolish violence and coercion, especially its systemic application from institutions and governments, and not content just to theorize, he built. No doubt a smart, capable dude, he was an Eagle Scout and had degrees in physics and materials science. He taught himself how to code and build a marketplace akin to eBay, which he called the Silk Road. Among other items, vendors there offered substances said to be illicit. The Silk Road facilitated voluntary interactions, triumphed self-ownership, and helped bring a use case to cryptocurrency, which was still relatively new to the scene. Ulbricht's why was clear. 20 years. 20 years. Uh, I want to have had a substantial positive impact on the future of humanity by that time. But what about those who kidnapped and caged him? Their why was clear too. Their clout was threatened. Worse than being lobbied to change, change their draconian drug policy and their interference into the lives of consenting adults, they were completely ignored. And unlike the Ebays of the world, they weren't even receiving a cut of the action. So they threw the book at Ulbricht. At what was essentially a show trial, Catherine Forrest told Ulbricht that he would be caged until he perished. Two life sentences plus 40 years. Again, just for writing code. Though those targeting Ulbricht had engaged in all sorts of character assassination before and after his trial, at the end of the day, Ulbricht was never charged with hurting a person or property, because he didn't. Common sense makes clear just who, in this situation, are the criminals. Efforts to see Ulbricht pardon have yet to materialize. He's just one more casualty of our drug war. But there's always hope. If you feel so inclined, you can impart some hope directly by writing him. And by thinking constructively, and working to build a better world. Good day, everyone. How's it going? Good, good. 
much better than those in the video. That's <laughs> yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. We are joined today by someone who you all probably know, but maybe not his face or even his actual name, which is Eric. And Eric, <laughs> how can we start with anything except asking you what on earth is behind you? <laughs> That's what's uh, going through my mind. A, a, a bunch of tiny pieces of painted wood. <laughs> okay. I Do sell, you build uh, model trains? Uh, I sell board game pieces. So um, things like this, mm. little uh, little tokens and meeples. Wait, is that from Carcassonne? Uh, yeah, they use these in Carcassonne and yes. a whole bunch of other games. So yeah, of all kinds of neat little uh -huh. miniature animals and plastic tokens and gems and discs and cubes and all sorts of all sorts of funny things and this is your business there is enough demand for these things around the world that you have obviously an entire warehouse just behind you and this is what you do uh yeah um i have my my own little niche <laughs> is this for are you selling to the uh the game creators uh, on wholesale or are you selling aftermarket to retail or what um both the, the bigger customers are people who are designing their own board games. That's really, uh, really where the bulk goes to. Occasionally, I get people that buy, you know, a piece they lost or something like that. Um, a lot of people will buy sets of slightly upgraded pieces or different colors. You know, a lot of games will come with normal cubes and people will want to change them into uh, something that more closely represents what the piece is supposed to be, a little person or an animal or whatever. So um, yeah, a combination of people upgrading and building games are the primary customers. But I also get a lot of people that do some just other random things with them, art projects, um, dollhouse stuff sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's real interesting. Sometimes people share pictures or sometimes I'll, uh, I'll look through the photo reviews because uh, people just do some really unexpected things with some of my products. Hmm. Well, that's yeah, neat. very interesting. So we are speaking to you today because the topic is merchant adoption of crypto payments, or perhaps lack thereof, not sure the angle today's show is going to take. But you are perfectly suited to speak about this, not only because you're obviously a career uh, e-commerce seller, but you have been in the crypto space as a fan and holder of both Dash and Doge for a long time. So, Ryan, would you give us a sort of um, introduction of what you'd like to talk about with Eric today? Yes, uh, I'm <clears throat> at the same time pulling up my screen uh, to share. And yeah, I you and I talked um, about a week ago, Amanda, and I, this was inspired by an experience that I had with, um, a potential, um, somebody who, who might be interested in, and I don't know how many, let me see if you're sharing my screen. I'm not actually ready to share the screen yet, oh, sorry uh, about that. but uh, cause I, I, I just have some preamble, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, First, I have two, two little stories. Uh, my, the first story is that when I first got into crypto, which was around 2012, 2013, um, like everybody at that time, I thought that this was, this was you know, the digital cash play, like pretty much everybody in, in Dash now. But it was almost universal in, in Bitcoin as well at that time, like digital cash, like peer-to-peer -peer exchange. For sure. They even called it magic internet money. Magic internet money. And so um, I thought I was right at home um, in this thinking, and I was in the early days. And one of the first things at the time, I was uh, a mechanical engineer doing industrial energy efficiency consulting. So going around um, large manufacturing facilities like paper plants and sawmills and things like that, trying to uh, save them energy using their wastes. Um, and I was self-employed, 
So I had the luxury of kind of doing some stuff on the side as well. And when I first started thinking about crypto, the first thing I wanted to do was, okay, where, where can I use the crypto and, and how can I get crypto and um, all these questions. And so I wanted it to be very easy for somebody else to answer these questions because when I was searching for them, um, it wasn't, it wasn't extremely difficult to find, but there was just such a, uh, a, a dispersed set of like maps and, and um, directories for merchant adoption, merchant acceptance and things like that. And so my first project that I was really interested in was creating a merchant directory where I'm combining all the other merchant directories and you kind of get ideas of the XKCD um, cartoon where it's like uh, the proliferation of standards. It's, it was kind of like the proliferation of merchant maps where everybody had the same thing. Like, okay, I want to combine all these maps and um, have one more. And what basically what you end up with is one more that <laughs> makes it even more dispersed and segmented. But at any rate, I had um, I had a website, a URL that I and I was contracting to have. I wasn't a developer, so I was uh, contracting with. I found a developer in my area to help build this merchant directory for me. And, I didn't know any of this. <laughs> yeah, and this was this was kind of my introduction uh, as both in both the crypto world and the web development world because I was learning firsthand from the client side somebody that's uh, asking a developer to build something for me. I was learning about web development in that way of like back end and front end. And, and um, I spent, because this was, I was so passionate about Bitcoin and it just made sense. Like I, and previous to this, I had like driven all the way up to Portland, Oregon to buy my first Bitcoin. Cause that was the only place that I could find it. So anyway, lots of stories that I won't go into, uh, but I had some Bitcoin and I wanted to use Bitcoin. Uh, and so I was paying this developer in Bitcoin. And obviously everybody has this story where, you know, they regret something. And I, I paid this, this guy way more Bitcoin than <laughs> uh, I should have probably because it never ended up getting finished was the bottom line. Um, and so I thought, how hard can this be, this web development thing? So I started getting into it myself to try to finish my own project. and. You know, that was a deep rabbit hole. I won't go into all of that. But um, anyway, so I, I, when I came to Dash, I came with this experience, this background of like merchant adoption, making a Bitcoin uh, merchant map. And so that's my one. That's my one story. Um, my second story is more recently. Um, I was as I'm getting more into web development, I'm coming across different uh, industry leaders. And one of those industry leaders in web development is a guy named uh, DHH, David H, some German last name, DHH is what he goes by. He's the guy that built Ruby on Rails, uh, a very, very popular web development framework that makes helps you get a website up very easily, front end and back end. And just pioneered like the, the simplicity path to web development. And now he's he's got this other idea about um, like paying paying once for a, a, a platform or paying paying once for a product instead of paying like a monthly subscription fees. So his his latest project is this this once uh, idea where you where a customer pays once for a certain software package like we used to do when you used to get a CD in the mail or whatever. Uh, anyway, he's bringing that back. But I follow him on Twitter. And he's got this new product out. So he's ready to release this, this, this brand new, like I'm back in the scene. I've got this product. Uh, it's, it's delivered under a license where you, you pay for it once. And I thought, Hey, let, let's just see if this guy, he's, you know, he's got thousands and thousands of followers. So let's see if this guy is interested in pay, accepting crypto. I looked on his website, no sign of crypto. In fact, he explicitly said, um, I don't accept crypto. Um, but um, so I, I messaged him uh, on Twitter X and I said, hey, I noticed your site. You mentioned, you know, you don't accept cryptocurrency. Is this something that's um, like you're principled against it or something you just haven't got around to? And he basically said, actually, I was I was principally against it early on. 
But with the Canadian trucker thing, I changed my mind and actually we do need crypto, but it's something that I just haven't got around to. This was all DM messaging uh, or no, part of that was public messaging. I, I can drop a link to the, to the conversation in, uh, in the show. Um, but anyway, I, I asked him like, are you willing to accept crypto? I'd be a, I'd be your first customer. And he basically, then, then we went to email. Sorry, this is a long story. We went to email. Um, and he said, oh, okay, um, we are actually looking into it. You aren't the first, you aren't the only one that uh, asked me about this. Um, so we are looking into it, but we are currently accepting payments through Shopify. And they already natively accept cryptocurrency through plugins. So we're looking into that option. So that's when I went down the Shopify um, plugin rabbit hole and uh, this is kind of where um, I got this. This connects in with why we have Eric on, because also last week I had a conversation in, in one of the Dash after parties where we were talking about crypto merchant adoption. And if anybody um, was a, a merchant, I had found out that um, that you are a merchant um, accepting crypto through Shopify, uh, Eric. And so... Um, in the, in, in the interest of just handing this over because my story is getting too long, uh, Eric, can you tell us a little bit about your actual company um, and why you're accepting cryptocurrency? But before you do that, I have to wrap up like the purpose of this, this conversation. The purpose was I found that, you know, I wanted to, to look at DHH's, um, like what he would experience when he was going down this uh, through the lens of somebody that's not really interested in crypto necessarily, but just wants to get it up and running. And so I, I looked at these plugin options for him and I just found that it was, it was kind of lacking and, and Dash didn't really have a very good option. And so that's, uh, I just figured we need to talk about this because we keep thinking that merchant adoption, that, that Dash is digital cash and that the merchants will come at some point, but I'm kind of wondering if and when and how and what we need to do to help facilitate that. Because as I was looking at those merchant acceptance options, it just didn't seem like it didn't seem straightforward, didn't seem easy for him to do the right thing. Because he was going to have like if he did one of these plugins, he'd have two to three intermediaries and like that's not really accepting crypto. And so I, I encouraged him to, you know, why don't you? you do this a little bit more bare metal approach or a developer and you could, you could accept crypto natively. Um, but anyway, it just opened up all these questions and, and all, frankly doubts about like, is it re actually reasonable for us to ex um, expect these merchants to just adopt crypto? So now I'll hand it over to you, Eric, what has your experience been with this very process? Well, Initially, I had, you know, back in uh, Bitcoin only times, I had the um, the BitPay plugin and that worked reasonably well. And it's in both Bitcoin and the BitPay plugin work have worked much less well over time. And eventually and that, I ditched it. Did that automatically yeah. convert to fiat before it? Um, I mean, how did you have that configured? Because it wasn't that. I mean, I didn't I didn't convert it for fiat. That was an option on BitPay. It was an option. Uh, but you didn't have it was to. an option. Um, so I switched to CoinPayments.net, which allowed you to take basically every single crypto. And uh, they did not have a fiat off ramp, but I wasn't off ramping to fiat anyway. So that wasn't a problem for me. Um, and then last year, I think it was maybe a little longer ago, they pulled out of the US. Um, and there are a lot of other options, I think, in, in Europe and other places that we just don't have here. Um, so since then, I haven't had an actual crypto plugin on my Shopify store, and I've just, you know, I'm, you know, I'm willing to accept it directly, you know, send some email somebody, uh, you know, an address or whatever. But uh, That's pretty nobody, telling. nobody really does that. So for anybody um, who doesn't know Eric like very well, like if anybody is crypto, Eric is crypto. I mean, I. I won't share any like personal details about you, Eric, in case you don't want that shared. But let's just say I've met this guy in person. I've seen his style. 
this is a crypto individual. <laughs> and if this person is not accepting crypto in his web store, forget about it. That's exactly the point. Yeah, it was um, after coin after coin payments left. Yeah, I was kind of in the position. Well, OK, how do I do this in a way that people will actually use it? Because manually sending addresses back and forth is not reasonable. That's that's not something you can actually facilitate anything more than trivial commerce on. Um, and I've kind of been stuck in that place for a while and I didn't, it appears, I didn't think there were any options that were good, uh, but it appears that they're just not in the Shopify app store anymore. You just have to manually install the app in Shopify, which I did right before uh, the stream started. And I, I am now testing out the Now Payments app, which uh, seems to support a really wide range of coins. Yeah, it's on my uh, my web store there, boardgamemodder.com. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to try an experiment, we can we can see if it works. <laughs> yeah, I just want to before we do that, I just want to emphasize how important this is what you're saying because what we have here is one of the most dedicated crypto people literally on the planet and also a merchant. And yet it's not straightforward how you accept crypto on your site and you just, you haven't done it. Like you have done it, but you stopped doing it. And now you're considering doing it, get, get, doing it again. Something is wrong here, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and, and try just uh, let's, let's see what you've got here. See if it, it's working um, and then discuss options, I suppose. Yeah. So, I mean, that is the thing. If I'm not using it, how can I expect any other merchant to implement it? Um, right. And they're really just, you know, if somebody were to come to me and say, hey, what can I use on my website? What's my point of sale option? I, you know, I haven't had a real good answer for them, at least if they're in the US. So, um, anyway, I. I discovered that they do exist for Shopify. They just aren't listed for whatever reason. So I went and manually installed the, the now payments and uh, we'll go ahead and see if it works. I'll just, you know, grab a, a random you item. From from distance, that, that looks like the same kind of inventory that was shown as being sold on the Silk Road. Board game <laughs> pieces. I don't know if that was really their, uh, their product line, but sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just threw a, orange meeple in my cart here and we're going to check out and see if it works um so i think regular shipping is fine seeing as i'm oh no oh yeah i just have to click the next page or no pay now so pay what's, now what's going, is... what's going on why is uh it showed up right before all right let me see if i can get it to work Oh, tell me it disappeared in the in the few minutes we were talking. Well, if it did, it just. Oh, did I just accidentally order it with a credit card? <laughs> well, that's silly. Um, is it because I'm logged in on my own name and Shopify just grabs my? Do you my want me to try on my end? Oh no, what did I do? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try this one more time. Uh, yeah, you. what on earth is happening? I don't understand what just happened. Are you at a different website now? It, um, your cart is empty. Oh, okay. There's okay, a... so I'm on, I can, I can share my screen instead if you want, maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, go ahead and do that. All right. So let me just take yours down. Oh, now it's now it's showing me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, do it on your screen and see if it shows up. Okay. Um, I th I think it's that I'm logged in and it wants to use my Shopify Pay account or whatever, which okay. I automatically have, I guess, because I'm a merchant. Okay. So um, here, where should I go from here? Do I say checkout or shop pay if I want to buy this now? Uh, click checkout. Click yeah, shop, shop pay will use your shop. So you've got I, something in your cart already. Yeah. yeah. And now you're checking out. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm, it would be nice to know initially if I wanted to pay with crypto right from this point, which button do I click? But you're telling me to click checkout. So that's what I'll do. Yeah. I, yeah. There you go. So here okay. it's going to allow you to. Cryptocurrency option. 
You say you will accept Bat Dash, Bitcoin Cash, or Dogecoin. Okay. Okay. I actually, that's my old one that doesn't do anything. This is where I would have to email you the address. I just haven't deleted it yet. So what we want to do is click that pay in crypto with now payments. Oh, 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 oh got it. So I, okay. yeah, I have to delete the other one. <laughs> okay. Okay. All but right. in theory, it should work now. I don't know if it's going to, it's probably going to make you fill in shipping information, which I don't know if you want to click off screen and, or just fill in nonsense. Yeah, that works. Okay. Tennessee. Test Tennessee. I hope this works. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, you need a valid test. Just, just do, code. just do a Utah and like eight four one 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 or something. Yeah. Okay. Utah eight four one one one. Okay. So, okay, now I have my shipping and all of that flat rate, all of that pay. Okay, complete. Okay. Okay, so I, no, thank you. Pay with now payments, is that normally what I would do here? Yep, I think so. Okay. Just lots of friction here, <laughs> you know? It, okay. Yeah, the interface is not ideal. So now I think all you have to do is click proceed to payment. Okay. Okay. And, and then and uh, I'm just gonna scan this quick here and- Just to see what it does. I'm going to scan it too. Yeah. It did not fill in the price. I'm not not super uh, happy about that. Right. Um, nobody should have to manually type all those numbers in. Huh. All right. So I'm manually typing in all the numbers and uh, paying the invoice. And uh, I have no idea if they support instant send, if it will go through immediately or what. Um, Are you going to actually pay this invoice? I just did. So I am waiting to see if it works. <laughs> okay. uh, or rather how fast it works. I would imagine it's going to work fine, but... So did you pay uh, on your end already with a yeah, with I, yeah I paid you can get rid of the the screen share if you want. No, 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 no. Let's keep it up. I okay, just want yeah, to see, see how long it takes to yeah, but you paid populate. already. You paid with like your dash wallet or whatever. Yeah, I paid with my dash wallet. And I'll just um it is showing on my end in the back end in my now payments interface. I oh, see really? the payment I see the payment status as waiting. Um and it... I am disappointed that it did not forward the actual price to my phone when I scanned that QR code. That seems like quite the oversight for them. Um, I don't know if that's something I can manipulate. The other thing that it doesn't have compared to um, coinpayments.net is that I could set a separate discount for every payment received on every separate coin. So on my front page banner, you might notice on my website, I offered 25% off for uh, orders paid in Dash. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not automatically doing that. I'm going to have to figure out how to get it to do that. I don't even know if I can do that per coin um, through this interface. So um, so it just maybe. updated from waiting to confirming. It was a small visual change, but it did. Mm. I did notice it. Yeah, maybe we, um, maybe we got a confirmation there or something. So definitely not instant send, but uh, thankfully for a website, doesn't matter that much. Uh, it would be nice to give people an immediate confirmation with Dash, but... Um, uh, or at least an immediate notification that like, hey, the broadcast, whatever terminology was used, just that yeah. like, you don't need to send the payment again, basically. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not so much concerned about like the user experience of this particular this particular plugin, this particular setup, I'm I'm more concerned that that this was literally like the best thing that you could do, and you had to go and and manually uh, do this application. It wasn't a plugin that was natively supported by Shopify. There were no options for you to accept Dash. I've noticed that even the sh the uh, the BitPay and the 
and the Coinbase plugin are no longer showing up in the Shopify app store, but they both exist still. So I, I'm wondering if it was a decision by Shopify to remove them or if there's some change in how their, um, how their system works that they need features that require you to manually give it API access or something. I'm not sure why that's the case, but um, yeah. It's not as easy as it should be. If I wanted to add a different credit card processor, I could just go to the App Store and click on it. Yeah, I actually so, have, if you want to share my screen for a little bit while we're still waiting for that, um, <laughs> I don't know if you can... Underscore that, that we're that still end. waiting for that. Uh, Pete, can you, can you continue to look at that by chance while we look at this and, and let us know if there's any updates on that? But yeah, this sure. is the Shopify website where if you click... You know, you search for cryptocurrency. This is what it comes up with. And they they do accept it. There's a lot of language about how, um, you know, be aware that this is not the best option for you kind of thing. And so they're kind of steering people away from it a little bit. But they do have these plugins that appear to be native plugins. And they have setup instructions for each one. And I went through each one of these. And obviously, like, none of these none of these options except dash except for potentially this bit to me commerce that i saw had a dash wallet but i still didn't see that they accept um accept dash but they do um they do accept bitpay for example with a native plugin and you know if you if you go to their setup instructions it's probably pretty straightforward but again it's still you're still working through with, with Bitcoin, with BitPay, you're still working through an intermediary, BitPay. Why are there no plugins that just let a merchant accept crypto and uh, potentially immediately swap into a stable coin if that's what they're concerned about? Um, maybe it doesn't. I, I believe this now commerce when I installed does that because it lets me choose my payout coin and address and it accepts it looks like about 200 coins or so. Uh, uh, so okay, basically yeah. everything people want to use. And I would imagine it's the same setup that those coins have there. I think that's just how you have to do these now. Well, as a customer, I, do, I will have to say I do not want to use it because this is still what I'm seeing on my side, by the way. All right, back to you. Yeah, and it's not listed here. So a merchant wouldn't be, you know, 99% of merchants are not even going to, going to know that that's an option for them yeah they shopify seems to not want people to do this which i find strange for a company that you know yes they have their own payment system mm -hmm. but they allow other payment options both fiat and crypto um they just kind of don't want people to use it but they still want it to be an option i guess i don't know it's and they, well, they, they also charge a fee. I, I read somewhere on their site that they, they still, they're going to charge you a fee. So you'd think that they would be okay with it. But anyway, it, it, yeah, again, this isn't about Shopify necessarily. This is about the broader subject of how are we going to crack this nut? How are we going, we as Dash or more broadly, perhaps the digital cash space, how are we going to fix this, Eric? Well, Assuming plugins like this actually work now that I know where to find them, uh, I think this does more or less fix it for the Shopify space. Um, I would like a better interface. There's too many clicks. It's too awkward. Uh, but a lot of this could be fixed, you know, uh, perhaps um, as, you know, as this company matures their product a little bit or somebody else could come along and do a better one. Um, but now that we know it exists, I can tell other merchants about it and, and that that kind of we don't necessarily need instant. It would be nice for, to get them to, to support instant send. That'd be really nice. But this at least works. This this is far better than not having anything, which is where I felt like we've been for a year or so here. Um, the other big problem is in person. We have to have instant payments in person. Um, and there, there unfortunately is not a good in-person point of sale. And I, I remember back, uh, you know, in the earlier Bitcoin days, I was out handing out tablets to local businesses so they could accept crypto and we'd have meetups there and people could pay in Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, it was pretty smooth. 
uh, we didn't have a lot of people doing it, so there was a little bit of awkwardness. Oh, that thing with the tablet, okay. Um, but I think we could have scaled that up pretty quickly had Bitcoin remained a viable payment option and, and not, not gotten too expensive to use. So that, that's really unfortunate. I, I really think that had the Bitcoin fees not gotten out of control and the whole block size thing not happened, that Bitcoin would probably be a very widely accepted payment at this point in time. And it would it would be a much bigger deal than it is today. Um, you know, uh, everybody in, in the Bitcoin world seems to want to call it a success because the price has gone up. But I, I think if you had real economic activity underneath it and major acceptance ac across the board from businesses that uh, that it would probably have a market cap dwarfing what it actually is today. I think people really underestimate the value of using it as a currency, um, which is, it, is doesn't Bitcoin isn't it underpinned by real economic activity though? And we just like to say that it isn't because we are not the ones fueling that economic activity. I mean, is it not in all likelihood being used as a settlement layer between governments and banks and large institutions? I uh, to the extent. Well, pretty much just for speculation on itself. I mean, I it's impossible to know what everybody is doing with Bitcoin, of course. Uh, but I suspect that there's very, very little actual commerce being done on Bitcoin. Um, and the, the primary reason for that is obvious. It's too slow and expensive. If you were doing regular commerce on it, you just you're throwing away money. Why not do it on Dash or Litecoin or Dogecoin? There's zero reason to pay insane fees and have uh, long waits for your payments to be confirmed. There's just there's no advantage. Um, any any business that did any non-trivial volume in cryptocurrency would just save a ton of money and uh, from from switching away from Bitcoin. Um, so uh, no, I just I don't believe it. Yeah, um, I think there's there's commerce happening on it. Uh, to move coins between exchanges and, and uh, to service the speculation on Bitcoin itself. You have to move Bitcoin for that to work. Um, but aside from speculation, no, I, I don't believe there's any real commerce on it. Um, well, this is one of the longer lasting cases of speculation I could ever have imagined, right? Because the whole, the whole thing of uh, speculation is eventually there will be a bubble and it pops and a lot of people go boo-hoo if they didn't get out before it popped and thus is the end of that but if this is just speculation it's been going on for more than a decade like non-stop right i mean what are your thoughts on this ryan and and we don't need to stay on this for too long but i'm just saying like it's not that there's no commerce happening there it's just not in game pieces it's not in board game pieces so that market is yet to be addressed well um like you said we've been doing this for 15 years and you know part of me wants to say well 15 years just isn't enough um but part of me also recognizes that we just we've got very little traction after 15 years and i think there's a lot of things to say about it I, I, but one of the things is you gotta you look at these payment processors and what they are offering their the merchants like what kind of incentives are they offering for the merchants um so i don't know if that's that they get point of sales free or services free or what whatever it is and then they they make their money through transaction fees or whatnot but whatever it is i think that we need we and dash and maybe maybe more broadly as a digital cash community we need a solution that we can that I can come to DHH with and say, here is the solution. It's as the merchant, you need to, to set it up by inserting this script tag and these other two things, and then you're done and you have no intermediaries. You get the crypto directly. I don't think that we have that. I think one. Um, so anyway, I, 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 I'm changed topics on you. I don't know if I answered your, your question about why we don't have um, commerce in Bitcoin necessarily, but part of it is this, this just ease of use case. Um, I think if we 
maybe got a plug in for any pay that would be a step forward um, because any pay is somewhat native to cryptocurrency and and they accept most of the digital cash coins so that that might be an option we already have a project in the incubator for any pay so we could we could potentially look into that for the shopify specifically um, but yeah, I guess, I guess the, the whole motivation behind this, it, Pete, if you could share my screen again, the whole motivation for this was just what do we what do we tell this guy? You know, this is this is a guy who um, I guess the hover's not working, but um, 500,000 followers almost. This would That's be this would be a great win for cryptocurrency or Dash and in, in, uh, specifically if we could um, get him to accept crypto and, and like even promote it like as a as a, a better as his preferred way to get paid uh, so this is what i talked to him about and this is our conversation and like i said earlier it it went over into email um where he basically said yeah i'm we're looking into it but but then even even with that, I just didn't have a good option for him because I went to, to look at the Shopify stuff and um, there's just not a good option for him. Um, so anyway, what? Well, I, as, go ahead. Go ahead. As far as this specific uh, case, um, I what I just installed might be a good option. Um, it looks like you can get your payout in whatever crypto you want. Uh, I can evaluate it and get back to you on that. Um, as far as any pay having a you know a cheaper lower no fee option that will just accept crypto and forward it to the merchant's wallet um, that's definitely a solution that we should have it's crazy that we don't have that um, and there's a lot of crypto enthusiasts uh, businesses that are crypto friendly that that could implement that and we should have that for every major platform that we can all the all the shopping cart softwares for Shopify for anybody else we can get to WooCommerce support. yeah all, all those um, however most people are not going to use that in order to onboard large businesses in large quantities we need a fiat off ramp um, so the problem with that has been that. The regulators have done their best to scare everybody away from offering that fiat off ramp to scare banking partners away from all of these tools. Um, do they need a fiat off ramp like you as the merchant as a merchant? Do you really I don't. need a fiat? No, off? no. Well, no. OK, just <laughs> merchants in general. OK, merchants in general. Uh, we can't expect what if, most what if merchants they had a who are not crypto. And, I, I, I in my opinion, that's worse than just leaving them on fiat. Okay. Um, it doesn't do anything to onboard them to an actual cryptocurrency, and it exposes them to extra risk. Um, I, I think it's a, a very bad option. That's just my personal opinion. I know people use them and do some commerce in them, but I, I think it's a dangerous thing to do. And uh, well, Let me ask you this then. As a, as a crypto nerd yourself and as a Dash fan, would you rather have... If, if I offered you a merchant acceptance tool that was like turnkey, two button click, and you can accept Dash payments directly, and your, your, your customers only have the Dash option, or I offer you the same thing with 10 very good payment uh, cryptos, which would you prefer? Well, I mean, assuming it has the same Dash, same functionality for Dash, I just assume to support all the payment coins. There's no reason not to support all the payment coins. Um, even this this plugin I have, um, you know, I got, what, 200 coins or so on there. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really, as long as they all get converted to Dash for me, I don't really care what they are. If somebody wants to, to pay in a stable coin or, you know, something crazy, it, it really doesn't make a difference to me. Um, and I, I think that will turn out to be the default merchant um, uh, perspective on this is that as long as you, you get what you can use on the end, uh, who cares what anybody pays and they're all easily convertible to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's the, um, the job of the payment processor. That's where they're, 
their value comes in regardless of whether you're converting you know from a stable coin to dash or from dash to fiat um, everybody needs something else on the back end and the the reality of the merchant situation is most merchants are not going to be able to buy their product and pay their bills with whatever crypto you want to send them they're going to need to convert it to something at least in the short term we have to build up to a point where all the products and services are available um, some of I, I actually had a vendor taking Bitcoin uh, for some of my uh, the products I sell and uh, because of the cost of Bitcoin that became not viable anymore uh, I have uh, other sources that are in countries that w just won't allow them to uh, to take cryptocurrency so um, that's just not going to be an option for me no matter how much I want to do it I'm going to need to pay for some things uh, with dollars that's just mm -hmm. It's just the reality of the situation. So if we want mass adoption by merchants, we we need a fiat op ramp. Um, if we can't get that because of regulatory issues at the moment, uh, we should definitely work on the, you know, the crypto to crypto end. If we could get in, in any pay plugin that that takes all the major payment coins and gives the merchant whichever one they prefer, that's pretty good. We can we can definitely increase the number of merchants with that. Um, um, Pete, uh, Pete, so you're saying now payments, can you share my screen again, Pete? You're saying now payments was the one that you've actually got working, even though it wasn't directly supported by, uh, by Shopify, you got it working. So I'm on the now payments site. Yeah. And it wasn't hard either. It was like nine steps. It was copy, paste this, click that, cool. click cool. this. Yeah. It's, 300 it's plus hard. Good. Nobody running a website would have a problem. They own, nobody, running, nobody running a Shopify page would have trouble installing this. Okay. They they only charge 0.5%. Uh, so that's this is sounding good. Yeah. Uh, so as bad. I scroll down here, you know, some, some good reviews. Strategic Alliances. Uh, Dash is not on here. eCash is on here. Um, are these, what do you think these companies are doing to help? Uh, it, should Dash be on here? What, what's your opinion? Do you see these as like top payment options or something as the merchant? Um, no, <laughs> I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know what they did to get on there, but um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Dash could reach out to them. They do, they do support Dash though. Um, okay. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe this would be helpful for Joel or some, somebody in Dash growth or, something that says like we need to be a partner with um now payments or something i don't know i'm just trying to figure out again big picture how do we how do we get merchant adoption and this looks like a good service um but well what i think we should do is uh find out what other services like this might exist that we just don't know i mean if i didn't know about it how's anybody else going to know about it? Um, I think we need to, we need to figure out what all the best options are, find good, solid, viable options that, that are actually worth promoting to customers or to merchants. And then we should, we should team up with whichever other payment coins are, you know, willing to work with us on this. Can we get some people from the Bitcoin cash community, from the Dogecoin community, whatever, and collaborate on, promoting uh, some of these services that that enable people to take all of our coins and just work together rather I mean there's no point in fighting each other none of us have any market share mm -hmm. and the, the, I, I feel like there's there's a lot of uh, you know uh, tendency in the crypto space for for people to try to promote their coin over another coin but the reality here is that we all have zero percent of the market and you're not going to get to a non-trivial percent by fighting over these tiny, tiny fractions of a percent of a, uh, of the uh, of commerce. It's just it's not going to happen. We need to collectively get to the point where uh, our coins are accepted at a non-trivial percentage of merchants, so that we can actually promote usage. Because we have we have kind of a, a balance problem here. We have a chicken and egg problem. Uh, merchants can't accept crypto if nobody's walking around with crypto wallets because nobody's going to use it. And users can't spend crypto if there's no merchants that accept it. 
So we need to do something to make to give one of these an advantage. And uh, you know, if we can create a uh, you know uh, a, a fiat or a coin, if we can't create a fiat off ramp to to bridge that gap, um, we at the very least can create a crypto to crypto. So there's no reason that we should you know we should be competing with all these other coins. We should all be working together. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, kind of a you know rising tide raises all boats type situation. Right. Yeah. And if, if, if you have means... a merchant list that takes all the major payment coins and every merchant on that list takes every major payment coin, that's a lot more useful of a list to a lot more people. Right, exactly. And, and if Dash is actually fundamentally the best payment coin in terms of technology speed, um, user experience, like confirmation time, then it doesn't matter if we're next to all of these other options, we will rise to the top if if we are in fact the best, which I believe that we are. Um, so I don't think that there's anything to be afraid of, like bringing more, more uh, of the coins together on one platform because the best coin will win. And I think that we, we are a uh, couple other questions as a, did you, did you set up your, your site um, through Shopify? Like, did you use Shopify to set up your website or is the website something completely different? No, that's it's just a Shopify page. It's a Shopify site. So when you when yeah. you wanted to make a website and you knew that you wanted to accept payments, Shopify helped you build your website as well. Yeah, it, you when you sign up for so Shopify, you just you get a template and you just pick one and drop all your products into it. Right. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the reason I picked Shopify is because of the uh, I have a lot of products that come in a lot of variations and Shopify supports a large number of variations on the listings in a way that makes them relatively easy for me to work with. Um, there's other shopping cart solutions that would have been a lot more of a pain for me personally to use just because of how my inventory works. I was going to ask that next. Yeah. Uh, your inventory management, that's all managed through Shopify as well, I assume? Um, yeah, so I have plugins that sync it up to other platforms. So I sell on Etsy and eBay as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I have third party plugins from the Shopify store that allow me to sync inventory. I mean, it's a challenge to keep everything synced properly. Uh, you know, um, not even, even Shopify doesn't do everything I would like in that regard. Uh, there's certainly, um, uh, yeah, there's certainly some headaches and, you know, products that contain products, product units that contain parts of other SKUs that I have, you know, that don't automatically adjust. So there's always, uh, you know, it's always a challenge to make sure the inventory is accurate and, and it mm -hmm. isn't always, but. Um, okay. So if you were a new merchant and you didn't have anything, if you didn't have any, uh, anything set up yet and you, you're just an entrepreneur you have an idea, you know you need a website that accepts payments. Would you have been interested in, or uh, would you have been interested in something like uh, like a Dash or a uh, some kind of service that was provided like Shopify, but put cryptocurrencies as the primary? I guess what I'm asking is, would it be interesting to pursue an option where uh, merchants could use a service built by Dash or built by somebody in the Dash community that that helped uh, merchants like yourself to put to, to put up a website that accepts cryptocurrency natively. Maybe has some some plugins for off ramping into into fiat, like you've said. Um, provide the services that Shopify does, but like, is there room in that space, or is that a losing battle? Um, because just um, with Dash Platform, we've been building it for eight years for some reason. Is this that reason that we could we could potentially leverage Dash Platform to, say, do uh, inventory management um, all encrypted or whatever um, and have a website that merchants could spin up just like they do with Shopify? But but Dash is is getting that um, Dash is getting the the benefit of, of providing that service financially uh, and by using Dash platform. So I've actually put a lot of thought into these kind of things. Um, I was, if you remember the early crypto, like eBay clones, uh, there was one, I think it was called Bitmit. 
Uh, I was the biggest seller on there for a while. And then um, CoinGig, uh, I was helping them yeah, test the, uh, during their development process. And CoinGig was more like an Amazon marketplace kind of thing, but crypto only. And uh, somebody bought Bitmit and then didn't do anything with it. And then CoinGig just quit. And nobody else has come along and tried to do those. Now, I don't think reinventing eBay or Etsy or Amazon with crypto only is going to be a viable thing to do. Um, yeah, I think it's... Not with crypto only, but just as a service that's provided yeah. by... Um, that uses Dash Platform. When Dash Platform is done, is this is this an opportunity? Is this... I, I think there is, but I think for it to be have a meaningful advantage you need to bring something to the table that the other than just crypto acceptance because i i think if all you want is crypto acceptance on these type of platforms um what we really need to do is just build it to the point where we can get ebay or somebody like that to to integrate it once we have a good and i think having a good solution is a big part of that i mean big companies did start to adopt crypto before we saw a lot of the travel companies do it even microsoft started mm -hmm. taking bitcoin on their gaming platform mm -hmm. um twitch had some stuff uh mm -hmm. with it um steam. steam steam was taking it and then they stopped yeah because it got too expensive so i think if we can build a good solution and show that people want to use it i think we can convert most probably all of these platforms i mean companies like amazon are going to hold out because they're making a ton of money on their own payment system um but I think we can convert most commerce to it. I mean, there's some sites that still do it, like Newegg. Um, so, but I think there is an opportunity with platform and I actually went pretty far into designing a system to do this. I, I have a, um, I kind of have it all written up if, if somebody wants to look at it at some point, but I wanted to do a decentralized marketplace, a kind of a marketplace in the style of say what library has done with digital ass uh, you know with with digital content um basically you store all of the um you store the things that necessarily need to be verified on platform and then each individual merchant would run their own server and platform would serve as basically a, a list server that um uh that showed you, I don't suppose either of you have ever used a direct connect. It was an old file sharing software a long time ago. I don't know if it's still around. Um, but no this, graphic. yeah, huh? I said no <laughs> Eddie, yeah. Um, but, but basically you would store, you would store and authenticate all of like, these are the stores that are compatible with our platform. And then you'd be able to browse them through the software you, you could download or somebody could make a web interface for it. You know, like Odyssey is a web interface for library. And then each merchant would be responsible for running their own server, just like their own cart software. Most substantial merchants already have their own, um, their own website and cart anyway that you could just write a plugin that would be compatible with this so because we want to make it easy to convert people we don't want to be like oh you have to put in all your products and all your everything into our system what we really want is something that you can go to approach somebody who's already a big uh amazon seller has a big shopify store and say hey do you want to get all the crypto customers too all you gotta do is install our plugin and you'll be automatically listed on our on our system um, and it'll be a decentralized marketplace. So to the customer, it's an interface, something like, say, Amazon Marketplace. But on the back end, it's, it's decentralized. So, you know, there isn't an Amazon in charge of what's on there. It's just whoever wants to join and run their own little shop. But it's all displayed in a, in a common way. And you have a, a common shopping cart system and everything. Um, I think that's very doable with very little resource overhead on Dash. And then you could have third party services. Let's say you have a bunch of people running like little Etsy shops and they're making some of their own stuff at home and they don't run their own website, want to run their own server. They could sign up and for, I mean, we could make it zero cost at first and then, you know, a percentage of sales on it. We could say like, hey, sign up. You could get some extra orders. One percent of it will go to support this system. And uh, for pretty trivial overhead, we could we could run services where uh, where these smaller merchants could all get 
get their products on the platform and not really pay anything pay for anything unless it actually sells so you know they're paying a few percent to support the service on what they sell but what they sell is a pretty much a hundred percent uh things that they wouldn't have otherwise sold so i I think that's an easy sell but it's got to be easy it's got to be you you have to be able to take your entire nobody wants to rebuild their inventory and then manually sync it between platforms you have to be able to take your amazon merchant uh spreadsheet or your csv file and drop it into the platform and have all your products appear right there. Yeah, there's there's two targets here. There's existing merchants, and then there are new merchants. And I I was asking more about the new merchants. Um, I understand the existing merchants are probably a bigger initial target because they're they're already there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about is it is there room? I think there is. Is there room for another new entrant into? into this marketplace of helping entrepreneurs get their website up, their inventory management, their payments, all in a nice, easy way that they don't have to run their own servers for new merchants again. Um, And that they could be up and running a website with very little overhead and very little cost. And we just take a small percentage of it. Um, So yeah, existing merchants, you, you, you don't want, to duplicate, you want to be able to give them an integration. But but for new merchants, you know, if, if we see digital cash as being the future of money, then there's a lot of new entrepreneurs that that need to be served. So just wondering yeah. what your thoughts. I mean, are there's so many options already available. I don't see. I don't think we should reinvent the web store. I mean, Shopify is pretty cheap and easy. Anybody can use Shopify. We could, bear, if we had a back end that. A, for a decentralized marketplace, you just make a Shopify plugin for it. Yep. Um, it's not not a big deal. Um, a bunch already exist. You can get an eBay plugin. You can get an Etsy plugin. You can get an Amazon a plugin, a Walmart plugin, a Newegg plugin. It'd just be one more plugin. Um, and there's already, if you don't want to do that and you just want to run your own little tiny free thing, there's things like OpenCart. Um, you just, uh, I think you just need to make a plugin for all the existing platforms. Um, you could remake the whole thing, but I, I, I think there's enough, enough to do here anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, payments are a huge thing, so there's a lot of solutions out there already for sure. I'm just wondering if, um, yeah, like integrations and cross cross marketing that that does seem to to ring uh you know you do want other people helping your helping drive traffic so integrations do help with that because then you can bring two communities together yeah um and if we could if we could get a you know a few other projects to work maybe pool some resources and then say you know we have the top five payment coins all the merchants on this platform accept all the coins and on the back end, if, say, they only want to receive Dogecoin, it converts all their money from these other coins to Dogecoin. And if we're, if we're just supporting, you know, Dash, Doge, Bitcoin, Cash, Litecoin, whatever, um, they're all going to be fast, cheap coins. It should be pretty cheap and easy for us to do that conversion on the back end. Uh, or maybe you could even integrate it with, like, ThorChain or Maya Protocol or something to do it. Yeah. I, completely I decentralized. That. There would be some there would be some kind of option so that the customer can pay with whatever coin they want and the merchant can hold and store whatever coin they want but anyway this is just kind of riffing um on specific things but i think i've got the general idea from from your perspective as a merchant uh and as a dash and crypto enthusiast um so i don't know exactly where we go from here i just kind of wanted to start the conversation or re restart the conversation because this to me is the reason that we exist is facilitating payments in the digital space and for some reason that hasn't really caught on yet um and i'd like to see that change and so i'd like to just get people people's minds on this problem and and what the actual problem is is it technical is it economic is it social um and to try to find solutions here and incubator obviously can can help with um ideas and help uh get things off the ground but you know obviously there's there's only so much we have to work with
but I think it's it's important that we take an honest look at what this problem is and if we can actually solve it in a way that meaningfully moves the needle. So I think that's the end of my thoughts. Amanda, any last thoughts from you or um, Eric? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, um, please, I'll, I'll finish this up, please. Uh, please yeah, I, I think really just having really good point of sale solutions is, is key. Um, we have to, we can't convert merchants unless we have something to offer them. If somebody comes to me, you know, with a retail space and asks me, I would like to accept whatever coin, how can I do it? I don't have an answer for them right now. I just don't because there are, the there are merchants locally here who want to accept crypto and don't have an option for it. So if you can't get the automatic yes people, you're not going to get anybody else. We need better point of sale systems first. Physical point um, of sale systems. Yes, definitely physical. I mean, the uh, the e-commerce ones need to be better too. Uh, the interfaces need to be better. Um, if we can somehow get a fiat off ramp, I think there's a, a huge potential market for that. Um, the major players are not doing anything. Uh, BitPay and Coinbase Commerce, from my perspective, clearly do not care about actually facilitating uh, payments. They just don't. Yeah. Well, I wonder if there's a partnership with Spritz here somewhere where, you know, we build an excellent user experience on the front end, um, both yeah. physical point of sale and e-commerce. But then we we shift all that. Um, we just we just send a payment to Spritz and then they take care of the off ramping for us. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they've done the hard part. It seems like the hard part is getting the banking solution on the back end. Build, building a plug in that processes crypto payments is not hard. I mean, there's there's probably a bunch of open source ones already that that just work just fine. There's just not a way to, you know, to give people an off ramp that's usable for most that most businesses need. Um, well, I'm hearing what you're saying, Eric, in terms of even the, the just just the point of sale stuff is totally lacking. I had a, an experience just last week where I reached out to merchant I had bought from before with Dash. I said, hey, I'd like to place another order. She wasn't taking them over her website for the reasons that you've outlined now. She was just taking them via text message. So not a scalable thing to begin with. Um, but even that show got stopped because she said, you know, um, I've been using Coinami to accept your Dash payments in the past and they don't support Dash anymore. I'm not even sure if they're like an active wallet anymore. So sorry, I'm going to have to find a new wallet provider. And, you know, she hasn't gotten back to me. So that's probably just a no-go there anymore. So yeah, it's, um, this is a very real problem that we've been talking about today. And I will close up the show by saying, I also appreciate that um, you both recognized or brought up the real opportunity that exists that I think Joel and Marina have also been showing us exist um, by a allying payment coins together, right? This is this is a tried and true ancient method. You you join up with people who are on your side. You know, there there are industry alliances that are made up of competing businesses, but they still join up to lobby for their collective interests. And if you drive down, you know, any main commercial street anywhere, a lot of the same businesses will purposely park themselves right next to each other. Even though, they're, even though they're competitors, they still get more business by just being right next to each other. Um, and so I would be glad to see us move more and more in that direction as well. So thanks for joining us today, Eric, and we'll see you all next week. Yeah. All right. See you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.